everybody. My name is Chetna and I'm an associate software engineer at Realtor.com and a lead with Women Who Code Python. I'm very excited to be here today uh, to interview Gail Evans. Uh, Gail is Mercer's Chief Digital Officer from 2018 and is a member of the executive leadership team. Mercer is one of the four operating companies of Marsh McLennan. As the CDO, she leads a dedicated team focused on driving and delivering Mercer's digital transformation strategy while partnering with a variety of teams across Mercer. Thank you so much for being here, Gail. Thank you, happy to be here. So uh, you've been in the tech industry in a leadership position for over 20 years now. And I really wanted our audience to hear from you about some of the highlights about your career journey in tech leadership. Sure. Um, I, I mean, I've come from very humble beginnings. You know, I started my career, uh, I thought I was going to be uh, on the assembly line uh, packaging film, uh, but went to school part time while working to get my degree, and I fell in love with software engineering. But I almost became a teacher, uh, but uh, fell in love with the, the web, the opportunity to drive so much change and create value with technology. So I've been a software engineer, a chief architect, a CTO, a CIO, at these various companies. I started my career at Eastman Kodak Company. And there I, I learned how to be a coder. I learned how to be an architect. And I left Eastman Kodak Company as their CIO of consumer. I skipped over to Bank of America where I led bankofamerica.com. And there I learned about performance and volume and being a part of a a high velocity website. From there, I left and, and led HP.com's transformation. I always sought after transformations. You know, it, 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 a lot of energy in transforming a company using technology to create value for the colleagues and for the clients. But I needed a big tech name on my resume. So I skipped over to Microsoft and led uh, Microsoft Studios uh, transformation and change in, with uh, their uh, Xbox titles. And from there, I, I fell in love with Mercer. I, I found purpose in my life. And uh, with Mercer, I, I came to Mercer to lead their digital transformation and also modernize their technology. So most of my career has been around modernizing, using tech to create value for consumers, for businesses, and for colleagues. That is incredible. Uh, that journey has so many, uh, it's, it's, so, it's spanning to such a duration and probably you'd have seen so much. So really glad to be here with you today. Um, could you uh, talk us through a day uh, at Mercer? In the early days of Mercer, I started Mercer as the CIO, and uh, it was it was different. It was my first um, entry into a consultant's life, and what did it mean to be a consultant and the tools that they used, and uh, B two B clients in a whole different way. Uh, in the first two years, it was really learning about the tools they used and how do I apply technology to help the colleagues and the actuaries and the consultants to deliver value to their clients. And, and it, was, it became more and more exciting as a CIO where I then thought about, well, we need to modernize our tools. And we need to start to think about how digital can play a role for our colleagues and our clients. And then I was asked to be the digital uh, officer. And with that, I got to sit on the executive leadership team and start to introduce algorithms, 
uh, data as a service. We created our own Mercer OS. You know, I figured, you know, we can have an operating system as well. And so my day at Mercer begins with a team because any success from any leader is about their team. And for me, the team I was able to assemble with Mercer has delivered many millions of dollars to the company, but more importantly, a team that has fun learning and transforming the culture to become more agile. And that's been a very exciting journey for me at Mercer. That is incredible. Um, speaking of uh, Mercer, and I, I wanted to touch a little bit about some of the things within Mercer's culture that excites you. Um, so could you talk to us about that? I'm surrounded by smart people. <laughs> Every day I go to work, the, the people at Mercer are, they're smart, they're passionate, and they're caring. Um, it, it is an atmosphere and a culture that really activates in its employees the, the, the energy to do their very best. And so those are the, that's the culture I thrive in most. But I've learned many times in my career, early in my career as a, a Black woman in tech, it hasn't always been an easy road. You know, I may speak of it with a smile, but it wasn't always smiles for sure. Um, but at Mercer, I found a place where I could learn a new domain. I could deliver value with tech. And the culture was thirsty for change. And, and that helped drive the digital transformation I was able to lead. Well, that, is, that is awesome. Uh, just to just to be in a culture like that, you would be uh, every day would be like a new day and like every minute would be enjoyable. So thank you for sharing. Every minute, that. every minute, Jenna, every minute is, is something different every day. Right. Because yeah. the we we have three business units in Mercer, health, wealth and career, and they all have their own set of challenges. And what we've been trying to do as a digital team is to de deliver a platform, the Mercer OS, to drive revenue, cost efficiency, but more importantly, solve our clients' issues in a way that is personalized and on demand for them so that they can understand their workforce, they can understand their health benefits, and they can leverage our wealth investment. Uh, capability. So it's it's absolutely a fun day every day. That is awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, so now talking a little bit about your leadership, you've been, uh, like we touched upon before, you've been in leadership for a long time. So how would you describe your leadership style currently as compared to when you began Kodak? Like um, what differences do you see there? And uh, also, what are some of the lessons you learned the hard way through through this career progression of yours? My leadership style early, um, I guess I always thought I needed to be like someone else. You know, or um, my style, because it was so different, wasn't the right style for corporate. And, you know, it, it impacted the way I, I led the team. Uh, over the years, I realized it was really okay just to be me. <laughs> It was okay to be me and all of the, the learnings um, that, that I had along the way from my parents, my mom, by the way, is my rock. I'd be remiss not to call her out because I am 
a product of all of what she has instilled in me. And I use that every day because leadership is about caring and nurturing. You know, sometimes I feel like a gardener, right? You plant seeds and you watch them grow and you nurture them. So my leadership style is about coaching, about growing leaders and helping them on their journey. It's not about being like anyone else. It's about learning about your team, knowing your team, being able to have a personal relationship with your team. When I say personal, I mean, I want to know who you are now. And and that is important to folks these days, for sure, is to, uh, so I lead by example. I, uh, I try very hard to help a, a, a team member on their career paths and their journey to reach the heights of their potential and, and have a lot of fun along the way. That is so incredible. The, the, the fact, even though I'm not in a leadership role currently, the fact that you mentioned that you know, you need needed to be like somebody. Those words are so powerful um, because like many times uh, in life, like I think the same thing. I'm, I'm like, do I need to like, do I need to fit into a template or like, you know, if I look up to somebody, do I need to be like them? Do I need to just uh, derive their style and follow it? Um, and then there's identity lost there. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, so you be comfortable in your own skin, you know, just, yeah. you know, when you make a mistake, you, you sometimes, you know, you're your own worst critic. And it's very important in software. You know, I have never seen bugless software, by the way, right? Never. Right. So there's always a bug somewhere. Someone's going to find it, you know, and I and I, I think that sometimes, you know, the need to be perfect. Follows us and. I don't I don't believe that that needs to be that 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 perfection needs to be sought after because you learn from so many mistakes, you learn so much from failure. And the whole agile principle is about fail fast. So they gave us permission and technology to fail fast and to learn. So yeah. be comfortable in your own skin, for sure. Yep, yep, definitely. Um, so now moving towards more like a general kind of question, uh, what are some things you enjoy doing outside of work? some of your hobbies or something like that? Well, my friends call me a geek because what I enjoy the most is a cup of coffee and picking a technology topic and researching it, you know? So I can't code as much as I used to, by the way, but, you know, I have my own AWS account. I put around in the cloud. And, you know, I, I, I self-taught myself just the entry level of Python and some of the algorithm machine learning languages just so that I can have a conversation with folks on my team and, and be a good leader and to be a good technology leader. I also need to understand and know the tech. But what really excites me outside of work is my grandson. He is the joy of my life. And I get to play with him. Uh, he keeps uh, the energy and my heartbeat uh, at a certain pace, chasing him, actually. Uh, <laughs> but um, it is a new phase for me, having a grandson. And what I adore most is that I can give him back to his parents. Um, and I, I have two boys of my own, so uh, it feels good to spoil him and give him back to his parents. That is so much fun uh, to to just like, you know, play around with him and like to be able to see him at that age. Um, how how old is he? He's three. He's three oh. years old. 
yeah. so much of energy, probably. He does. He does. And he loves to play tag. And so wow. you know, sometimes you wish you were 20 years younger chasing him over <laughs> around the kitchen. But it's it's fun. And, you know, it's um, it's a joy to be at this stage in, in my career. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so a couple of uh, questions for thinking about the future of women in in tech. Uh, what excites you the most about the future of tech and what do you think women would specifically bring into the table? I think the future of tech is changing, changing the world. It's, um, you know, as you think about what, you know, data and analytics is, you know, from a, personalization. The more I know about you, the more I can serve you. Uh, I can personalize, you know, the the communications with you. Look at social media. Oh my God, it's blown up, you know, Mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, you know, and all of these new technologies, these SaaS models, I think are changing the way we communicate uh, the way we interface with each other, the smartphone form, smartphone is a game changer uh, in terms of, you know, you you will never leave your phone at home. You will never leave that. Everything is in it. Every app you have, every phone number, how you communicate. I, my sons, by the way, text more than they speak. So. Uh, I, you know, it's changing their behavior. Um, so, you know, 5G and, and what that will bring and the speed by which it will, will change the way we communicate even further. So I think technology for any company, the pandemic, for example, you know, has given digital a big boost uh, during the pandemic and, and how these new digital technologies and networking helped us to continue to communicate and continue to work. I think women uh, will continue to bring a big difference to technology in the way in which women approach technology and solve problems differently, you know, and, and lead differently. Because technology in itself is not where the value is. It's how we take that technology and solve problems with it, create value for our clients, for our consumers, for our colleagues. And I think women are in a unique unique position to tackle those new behaviors in a way in which many will benefit from their perspective. But they need to be themselves. They need to allow themselves to look at a problem through their lens, not to be like anyone, but to solve the problem using the technology strength that they know they have and solve that problem uniquely for the client, the consumer or or the colleague. And I think once women are able to do that, they will rise in um, status and in roles and 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 be seen in more leadership roles. That's what we need. Don't be afraid of yeah. leadership. Do not be afraid of taking a leadership role. You know, take it and nail it and 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 go on to the next one. And dream big. Don't dream small. Dream big. Dream big. I was a dreamer. I was a janitor, and now I'm the chief digital officer of Mercer. I was a dreamer. And dreams do come true. That is so um, powerful because um, many times, even if uh, we're like when we're looking at a problem and then we sometimes come up with something unique and more efficient than um, 
somebody else maybe who's known to have that knowledge throughout even if it's more efficient we still question ourselves we're like okay did i probably what i did wasn't right you know like this isn't this probably is wrong so we're just going to let's just move back to what they did and work from there so i find that not only me a, a lot of women um have this kind of mentality and um definitely dreaming big yeah all the way to go don't um, be silent let your voice be heard don't yeah. be silent be courageous be courageous thank you for be that be phenomenal answer. be phenomenal that's who you are for oh. sure thanks again so uh one more final question before we uh, wrap up uh what is one pro tip for women in tech i know we've we've spoken about a couple of things uh many uh women have imposter syndrome there's there's many many things that women have to tackle but according to you what is one big resounding pro tip in your mind to women in tech i think you should women should you should have a core whatever that core technology is whether it's ai whether it's you know software development whatever it is be good at it be really good at it but be confident that you are good at it you know and i think that that will enable you to take more risk um and have a lot more fun if you allow yourself to feel like you're the best and be confident that you are and can deliver all the fear will go away and you'll have so much more fun when you walk in the room and you know you're the best it's a wonderful feeling oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a yep. wonderful <laughs> feeling you know and you know you don't you're not sort of crazy about it you just know that you are and you treat people with that kindness because at the end of the day as i mentioned and i'll i'll end with what i started it's the team it is really the team that makes a leader successful Well, um I'm I'm sure the audience would uh definitely join me uh in saying a huge thank you to you uh for doing uh, for speaking to us today and sharing so much of knowledge uh that we'll take away from this. Thank you so much, Gail. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.